Hey everyone! In this video we're going to discuss how to use the output textures of HTG Surface Hair Edition to map onto a head mesh using the warp projection of Substance 3D Painter. This way you may design your hair textures procedurally with HTG Surface on a clean UV space, then map them on a head mesh using a completely different UV layout, such as with the split on the top of the head. As an artist, this also enables you to create hair models that you can distribute, like sell on a store, by providing only the PBR textures and a material aggregating them, ready to be warped on any head mesh inside Painter. HTG Surface Hair Edition is a tool for Substance 3D Painter, enabling to procedurally create hair as PBR textures directly on a head or scalp mesh, without the need of additional geometry. It may be used as a base layer to place hair cards on, or as is, depending on your character design. Many procedural parameters enable to vary the hair length locally, their shape, color, and many more attributes. You may even shape long hair with direction painting. The generated hair textures are then exported by Painter, and this is where we start off for this video. For this demo, we'll be using textures of the Agua sample, which is one of the projects provided with HTG Surface Hair Edition. As a first step, we're going to make sure the opacity map is fully black outside of the hair area, and we're going to use Photoshop for this. Let's select subject, then clean up the selection, so we can fill up all the white surroundings with black. Now let's create our material in Substance 3D Designer. If you're not familiar with Designer, don't worry, as what we're going to do here is very simple. We'll just import our textures, connect them to output nodes, set up a few properties and then publish the material that we can use into Painter. We'll begin with creating a new Substance Graph using the Metallic Roughness template, so we'll have a bunch of output nodes to start with, and give it a name. We'll also set up the texture size to 4K, as this is the size of our textures. So we have here default blank nodes to the left and output nodes to the right. We'll select the nodes on the left with left click and drag, and hit the del key to delete them. We don't need them, as we'll use our textures instead. Now we're going to import our textures into Designer. We'll select the AO combined. For this sample, the long and short hair textures were exported separately for some maps and the combined versions to gather them both. The base color, the displacement processed, which is a displacement map slightly blurred, the normal combined, the opacity and roughness maps. Then we drag and drop this selection into Designer and choose Link Resources so the textures are only referenced by Designer and not copied. Now let's connect our textures to the output nodes. We'll begin with the roughness, then the ambient occlusion, the normal. The opacity doesn't have an output node yet, we'll create it afterwards. Let's connect the base color the height. We're going to create a new output node for the displacement, so in Painter we'll be able to use either the height or displacement channel. To create an output node, we click this icon in the toolbar and give it an identifier. Here, displacement. We also need to assign a usage so Painter knows how to use this channel. Now let's create another output node for the opacity map. Give it the opacity identifier and assign it the opacity usage. For this opacity output, we also need to set up a specific property into the user data field, which is is channels alpha equals true. This will let Painter know we want to use this channel as a global mask for all the other channels. Now we can go and save our graph as an SBS file which is the project file format in Designer. Before publishing the material, we'll double-click on the graph's background to edit some graph properties. We'll set the type to standard material and generate an icon. 
We'll save again, then publish our material as an SBSR. Make sure to have the right path where you want to save the SBSR, then click Publish. The SBSR is a portable format that lets you embed the material into various hosts, such as Painter. Now into Painter, we'll set up a new project. Use 2K as texture resolution, we can change it later. Select our mesh and create the project. This project contains three meshes, the head, eyes, and a scalp, which is the clean UV mesh the hair textures have been generated on using HairTG surface. We won't need this scalp mesh any further as we already have the textures generated through it. So let's make a little pause here to discuss a few things. HairTG surface enables to procedurally generate hair on any mesh we don't necessarily have to use a scalp mesh. We could very well have generated the hair directly on the head mesh with its specific UVs. However, if we had done this, the result would not have been as clean as with the scalp mesh at the location where the head is split due to its UVs. Also, generating the hair directly on the head mesh would have tied our texture to this particular UVs and it would have been more difficult to reuse the hair on another model using different UVs. Generating the hair initially on the scalp mesh allows us to use a clean UV base which is not tied to any specific head UVs and we'll then use the paint or warp projection to adapt it to any head UVs. Going back to our painter project, we'll delete the default paint layer on our head mesh and create a fill layer instead. We'll import our SBSR material and select our project as destination. Let's disable visibility of the scalp mesh as we don't need it here. We'll project our material directly on the head mesh. We'll click on material mode of our fill layer and assign our SBSR material to it. Let's change the projection mode to warp. And now we can use the move and rotation controls to position the warp grid on the top of the head. We can increase the projection depth to see how the material is laid out on the mesh. We can see here it is reversed, so we'll rotate it 180 degrees. Then we can reduce the projection depth to improve performance. We'll now set up the warp grid. You may use as many subdivisions as you want. I found five to be a good compromise between usability and control. You may also add subdivisions into some areas using the split options. Now we'll enter into edit vertices mode in order to position the grid dots on our model. When we begin to move the dots, we cannot change the grid size anymore, so make sure to have one that fits your needs. I usually move the dots on the model per row or column, which usually prevents to get lost into the myriad of dots. While not all the dots have been positioned, the texture may look weird, but there is no need to pay attention to it before all the dots are positioned.
When all the dots are on the model, we can refine their placement to get the design we want. We'll change the shader to ASM here and set up tessellation. In this project, I am using the displacement channel as source of tessellation, so I need to set it up for the shader. Our height texture has already been processed with a little blur, but we can add more by creating a blur layer. For this, we'll create a fill layer and set up its displacement channel to pass through mode. Then we'll add a blur filter to it and enable it on the displacement channel only. Here this is another hair model, part of the HDG Surface Hair Edition package, for which I've also created material and used warp projection on the head mesh. And here, this is how things look like in the 2D view on the base color texture. Thank you for watching this video. And if you wish to know more about the HDD tools, feel free to visit the website and the Discord server.